The Origins of Eibar The first inhabitants of Eibar settled in the area of Akondia, which was a strategic location. On the royal way between the district of Durangesau and the coast of Kipuzkoa. The early inhabitants of these lands lived in farmsteads in the valleys of Arate, Aguinaga, Gorosta, Mandiola, and Otaola Quinarra. They gathered in settlements which were created around chapels and parish churches. Arate, San Pedro de Acondia, San Roman, Acitain, San Salvador, San Miguel de Aguinaga, and a few more. It was not just religious services that were held in the chapels. They were also centers for social interaction. Villagers met there to settle their differences, reach agreements, and pass local bylaws, decide on appointments in the forges, and so on. The forges were places where iron was worked. At first, they were located on the tree-lined upper slopes where there was an abundant supply of charcoal and a steady wind. However, when they started to use water to power the hammers in the forges, they moved down to the valleys. In the Ego Valley, there were a number of forges. One in Ibarra de Yuso, two in Isasi, Olacua and Ulzaga, Olarreaga and Eizaga, which, despite being located in Zaldívar, were run by people from Eibar, and the one in San Lorente de Otaola, which was the hub for forges in Eibar. There were also a large number of mills, Irunabe, Barrenechea, Esarrigi, Goicoa and Esarrigi, Beacoa, Eiscua, Asitain, Urquizu, Valerio, Ariaspe, Portalerrota, Amaña, Asaldegui, Errotacho. In 1335, King Alfonso XI granted the blacksmiths a charter. This entitled them to appoint guards to defend their rights. It also allowed them to cut down trees for charcoal and exempted them from taxation on the food consumed in the forges. Moreover, they could only be arrested and sued before their mayor. Little by little, the Abar forges turned into ironworks, workshops making iron products, nails, pikes, railings, etc. Thus commenced a flourishing urban centre on the banks of the river Ego. The inhabitants worked in the mills, traded in small shops, grew vegetables and worked in trades related to iron. It was at this point that they asked King Alfonso XI of Castile to found the town. Thus, on the 5th of February 1346, the king duly granted the charter for the founding of Villanueva de San Andrés de Eibar, which later became San Andrés de Eibar. Through this document, the king granted permission to raise a walled town with defensive turrets around the church of San Andrés, which was situated on the bank of the river Ego on a hilltop overlooking the Meander. And just one street, Barrangale, followed the path of the royal way with two entrances. Ibarra Gate in the east and Ulsaga Gate to the west. The consolidation of Eibar as a town led to important changes to the lives of the inhabitants. They could now appoint a mayor every year, they could use land to negotiate, and they could use water for irrigation and to power the mills, and were allowed to use wood from the forest. What's more, they were exempted from paying taxes and were only obliged to pay the king two salaries per household. But Eibar was not just the area within the city walls. Eibar included the farms that were located in the valleys under its jurisdiction. The first extension of the walls led to the creation of two new streets, Middle Street or El Getacale and Somera Street or Churiocale. The city walls were extended uphill and the higher stretch of wall was closed off with a gate. This layout remained unchanged until the 16th century.